I am Harrison Kurtz, Professor uh, Emeritus of Biological Sciences. The series, of which today's episode is one, has been developed by the USC Emeriti Center to shed light on USC's development and changes through conversations with outstanding faculty, staff, and alumni who have had long relationships with our university. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Thomas Clements, Professor Emeritus of Geological Sciences today, and as well, Dr. Barney Pipkin, Associate Professor of Geological Sciences, who was one of Dr. Clements' uh, students. Dr. Tillman Hall, Director of the Emeriti Center, and I have enjoyed renewing our friendship with Dr. Clements, having lunched with him and joined him on a tour of the campus today. Dr. Clements is certainly a delightful, interesting, and highly respected gentleman, and one who's been a Trojan for many years. To brief you somewhat on his background, he was born in Chicago on June 7, uh, 1898. Uh, he grew up in Texas and now lives with his wife, Lydia, in Los Angeles area. He received his primary degree in mining engineering from the Texas School of Mines in 1922. Or, pardon me, uh, yes, in 1922. His master's degree in geology from the California Institute of Technology in 1929, and his doctoral degree in, uh, from the same institution in 1932. As an active geologist for many years, his research interests have been primarily in the field of economic geology, with emphases on mining, engineering geology, and petroleum and sedimentation geology. Dr. Clements arrived at USC in 1929 and served as an instructor from then until 1932, when he was promoted to the position of assistant professor, which he held until 1942, when he became a full professor until his retirement in 1964. From 1933 until 1963, he served as head of the Department of Geological Sciences and remarkably wore three hats for varying periods of time as acting head of our Department of Geography from 1944 to 1948 and acting head of Petroleum Engineering from 1947 till 1948. From 1945, until 1964, he enjoyed the distinct honor of being Hancock Professor of Geology in the Ellen Hancock Foundation for Scientific Research, and as chairman of that foundation's Committee on Program Supervision from 1949 until 1960. During and following his academic career, he has had many interests and has held leadership positions with such agencies as the Los Angeles County Museum, the National Geographic Society, and the City of Los Angeles. He's been involved in such diverse activities as studying the source of Mexican jade, inquiry into the Baldwin Hills Dam disaster, and in association with Louis S. B. Leakey of the Institute of Prehistory in Nairobi, Kenya, research in Calico, California, on evidence of earliest man in the Western Hemisphere, to cite only a few. Dr. Clements has published widely on gemstones, petroleum geology, earthquakes, South American geology, and sedimentation. His volume, The Geological Story of Death Valley, first published in 1952, was repeatedly edited, the 11th and last edition being issued in 1982. It is quite obvious that Dr. Clements certainly did not retire in 1964, as his curriculum vitae might indicate. Now let's hear from Dr. Clements. Tom, what enticed you or attracted you to come to USC? Well, actually, I had a chance to go with the Standard Oil Company and uh, for some reason, I've always thought I would like to teach. And I heard that there was an opening at USC. And uh, I made inquiries and found out that it paid the sum of $2,000 a year, <laughs> which I could have more than 
doubled if I'd gone in with an oil company. But uh, for some reason, I th thought I would like to be a teacher. And uh, that's when I joined the forces here at University of Southern California. I found I was in a department uh, of one man at the time, when I became the second man. And uh, occasionally, someone else came in and lectured in geology. But uh, the then the head of the department was a very, uh, I started to say peculiar person. He wasn't a peculiar person. Uh, he just had a different personality. And uh, it happened that uh, in my first, very first few days, we had a, an, a man come in who was a, a, a relative of our assistant uh, head, head of the university. And uh, he and the department head did not get along. And uh, the only thing was that this man, who, who was a geologist, uh, I should say, and a competent geologist, this other man wanted to come just three days a week. And uh, that was all right. But uh, whenever we had uh, departmental meetings, they were on the days when he didn't have a class and so wasn't there, and which uh, didn't make for great friendship. Finally, the vice president is what he was, vice president of the university, he wanted to make this other man uh, head of the department. And uh, uh, this man said, hell, I don't want the job. Give it to Clements. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I became head of the department. <laughs> and uh, th things were kind of <laughs> bad, obviously, when I who just come in a uh, short time before, just come into the department, should be made head of it. You estimated that in 1929, SE had about, in the neighborhood of 2,000 students. That, that's my uh -huh. memory of it. Yes. And today, we're at the point of over 27,000 students. And in relation to this, after touring the campus, uh, wondered what, what struck you most about the changes not only from when you first came here, but when you retired in 1964. Well, frankly, after seeing it all, I'm glad I'm not teaching. <laughs> and not teaching here or anywhere else. For, uh, there is a large uh, student population. One of the nice parts about the time when I was head of the department, or teaching the, in the department, uh, that we had a close, friendly relation, friendship relation with the students. And uh, I, I thought that uh, we had a pretty happy family. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe to uh, bear that out, uh, one of these former students who came, not right away after I became head of the department, but uh, several years later, I guess, uh, he and I became friends. In fact, I thought I was friends with, with most of the students. Once in a while, we'd have, have one, and we did in that early day when a uh, boy's mother called up and asked if her son couldn't have this other man as his teacher instead of me, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which uh, wasn't very complimentary, no. <laughs> but it was quite all right. I understood it. it uh, 
he later became um, very high up in motion picture production. Mm -hmm. So the geology that he got didn't hurt him any, apparently. <laughs> but uh, we always had a, I thought, a nice feeling between the teaching staff and the students. Well, I can uh, I can testify to that, Tom. He uh, Tom really introduced me to uh, to the cordiality of the faculty at USC at the time. Mm -hmm. I was uh, right out of the Marine Corps and a little rough around the edges. And uh, Tom and Lydia had us up to his house, their house for dinner, and uh, uh, inter introduced us to uh, gracious dining, <laughs> and we certainly enjoyed that. And Tom and Lydia were so devoted to each other. They were a real sure. role models for yeah. those of us who got married later. And uh, the other thing he introduced us to is to other forms of culture, too, the opera. And uh, I can remember the opera tours that yes. uh, we took at one time with Carl Princey. Mm -hmm. And it was true. Right. We were a very, very, very close-knit department. And I think that's probably one of the reasons I always maintained a very close association with USC. Mm -hmm. Never really feeling I was ever going to come back oh, and really? be here at the university as a professor. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, you went through the period of the Great Depression, Tom, and I don't mean uh, mental depression, but, uh, <laughs> um, or economic depression. I think you arrived shortly after uh, the, um, uh, the stock market crash, 1929. Before. Slightly, actually crashed. before, yes. Uh -huh. But uh, did, do you feel that uh, this, uh, were you affected personally by the Depression, or do you feel the university felt uh, the effects of the Depression? Well, actually, we didn't feel uh, any, anything particular about it. We didn't have much money anyhow, <laughs> and... Uh, even if it didn't buy much, why, it still bought enough to keep us alive. And uh, we, we came through it, and it was a, it was a long year, but uh, uh, I had my job here. And even though $2,000 a year was not very much, it was $2,000, and it was paid, and paid yes. monthly, so that... Uh, Actually, we did not feel the effects of the depression to the extent that most people did. Well, this, I think, goes along a little bit with uh, one of your comments uh, uh, earlier and Barney's comments on the cordiality of the, the faculty and the close relationships. I think uh, it really still exists, certainly in smaller class situations. And uh, I know that you were... Uh, it was uh, prior to your retirement that we had the the influx of post World War II veterans and uh, uh, Korean War veterans, and at that time, you recall that we were we were uh, um, teaching practically everything in the evening program that we offered during the day, and I know that uh, uh, I don't know I, I'm curious about the size of the classes when you first started compared to uh, uh, the size, say, during that period when we really had a student bulge. And Barney, you might like to come in and, and comment on, say, the classes that you're involved in now as far as size, getting at the idea of the, of the relationship, the friendship with the students. Well, I, you want to... Well, I can, uh, I can remember we were up in the fourth floor of Bridge Hall, and all the geology courses were taught on that floor. Yes. It wasn't quite the buckshot pattern we have today in the mm -hmm. university where lecture halls for That's departments right. are all over campus. And uh, uh, we had a dress code. You remember that, Tom? No, yes. no, no sandals That's in right. class, no shorts. <laughs> and uh, we didn't mind it. I mean, I'd just gotten out of the Marine Corps and I always told sure. you what to do, so it wasn't any big <laughs> deal uh, being here at the mm -hmm. university. And uh, uh, the classes were generally small, and if you earned... Uh, a good grade, you, you knew the professor knew who you were, uh -huh. and uh, 
which is a little bit difficult today in large classes like yes, I certainly. teach. Sometimes right. I, I feel very sad I don't see some of my best students because they just come and do their work and, and leave. But uh, uh, Tom, what do, you, what do you remember about the fourth floor there, a bridge? Uh, about what? About the fourth floor of Bridge Hall, which is now the business school, mm -hmm. as a place to teach, for instance. And for the well, numbers I, of students we had, mm -hmm. we didn't have many majors, as I remember. I thought it was very good. Uh, when I uh, first got the job of teaching, and I was told where the uh, office was up in the fourth floor of Bridge Hall. Well, the first day I had any classes or anything, I drove in to the parking lot right in the back of the house, and I stopped and got out of the car, and a window opened in the office on uh, one of the offices on the first floor, and the man stuck his head out and said, "You can't." parked there, <laughs> and I said, the hell I can't, and I left the car and walked upstairs. Uh, he happened to be the father of one of the students who became one of my best friends <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, uh, I had no uh, reaction to that. Uh, I wasn't going to move the car, and uh, I, I guess I put it forcefully enough that uh, this man, this other teacher, uh, decided to let it drop. And so I continued to park, park there. And when I was carried, taken around the, the place today, mm -hmm. I just thank God I wasn't teaching now. <laughs> with, with all the cars and with all the people and with all the houses and buildings, I think I got it at a good time, and uh, I left it. It was still a pretty good time. So I, I enjoyed teaching very much, and uh, I've had the great pleasure of having letters, uh, a letter signed by, uh, I guess, about 150 of them former students. Uh, relationship with, with the students is one of the things that uh, I, I felt best about, because I thought I had real friends, and uh, there were always those that uh, thought I was something nasty, but uh, on the whole, uh, I found dealing with students was one of the very pleasant things, and uh, <clears throat> I, I've missed teaching, <coughs> pardon me, although I wouldn't want to accept a job teaching at the present time. In this place, I'd never find my room. <laughs> so on the whole, though, I, it was a very satisfactory uh, period of my life. Well, Tom was a very, uh, very good teacher, and he demanded a lot of his students, and, and we still joke about it today, those of us who had Dr. Clements, that when he got mad at you, as long as his eyes twinkled, you knew you were okay. But when the <laughs> eyes stopped <laughs> twinkling, you did one of two things. You either had to leave the room or make right whatever you did wrong and do it immediately. But, uh, uh, Tom, do you have, did you have a, a, a faculty member here? Of that? that? Did you have a, a faculty member in a different department that was a very good friend of yours? I don't remember as, as a student. Yes. You know, I didn't see who you sort of palled around with, but well, in a different was, department. There was one in engineering that uh, I felt was a very good friend. And, uh, was, that Viv was that Vivian, Bob Vivian? No. Well, I, I figured he was a good, uh, good friend, too. Now, this was, uh, uh, it's been so long since I certainly thought about him. He, he was, uh, no, I can't, I can't think of his name right now, so. And you might not know it, I might not uh, 
recognize the recognize name. it. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I had to do, and I didn't mind doing. Uh, once in a while, uh, some head of, of a department would uh, not not show up or something, and. Uh, Dr. Von Kleinschmidt said, well, well, give it to Clements. And so I became Clements, of, I became the head of uh, a couple of departments <laughs> that, that I really knew nothing about. <laughs> but, uh, there wasn't much for the head of a department to do anyhow. And uh, so we got by with it all right. But, um, I was amused to some extent, and also I felt highly honored that uh, the president would think that I could handle another one too. Well, I'm sure you did a good job of all, Tom. Well, uh, it stayed together, and that's <laughs> probably the main thing I could say. I was interested in your comments about uh, uh, Bridge Hall and your, and your question, Barney, because I know over your period of time, as your department developed and, and grew in size, that uh, you began to spread out over campus. It wasn't just the long hike up to the fourth floor of uh, Bridge Hall, <laughs> but I know that you, like uh, many others, were in, in temporary quarters in barracks, and, uh, and I know that uh, you also had uh, 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 research laboratories and laboratories in the Hancock Foundation building. This brings up the point because I know, uh, I think it was a, it's a distinct honor to have been uh, uh, a Hancock professor. And I wondered if you uh, have recollections of your, uh, your period as the Hancock professor and of your relationship with Captain Hancock. Well, uh, I don't know just how it uh, came about, uh, but anyhow, uh, I got in, went into the uh, Hancock building, and uh, I had met Captain Hancock before. He used to put on some uh, music, music things, musical things, at his home up on. I oh, forget on what street it is. Doesn't matter. And. Uh, my wife and I used to go to those uh, musical affairs that he, he had in the house. They were open to anyone who wanted to come. And uh, so I felt that, in a way, we knew him. And so when he came to the camp campus here, why, I introduced myself and uh, we visited. We had some things in, in common. Uh, music was one. Not that I'm a musician, because I'm not. But uh, I do enjoy good music. And uh, it, it just happened to grow. And uh, he would ask me about something, and uh, I would try to give him a good answer. And then I was invited to go out on the on cruise with them. I won't say that we were intimate by any means, but uh, we were good friends. We never had any uh, uh, formal sort of connection. And I think I told somebody the other day, somebody wanted to know what I got for it, and I said, well, I didn't get anything, but I wasn't telling the truth. I just uh, looked over uh, some material I had in the safe, and I found that uh, I got $300 a year extra as, <laughs> as a Hancock professor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I must have known I had it because I spread it. <laughs> so I say it. It's not only a distinction to be a <laughs> no, uh, Hancock yeah, yeah. professor, but there were there Perks. were some other rewards. <laughs> yeah. Tom, I I can uh, I still to this day point to the fine eye you had for hiring a talent. I didn't know it at the time because I was just a student, but I had classes from uh, uh, K.O. Emery and Bill Easton mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, Orville Bandy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, two of whom were presidents of their national professional societies and one who is a member of the National Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. I wonder, could you reflect at all on how you picked uh, young professors right out of the Navy, some of them, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, without any, any track record to speak of other than, than their uh, Ph.D. research? Well, uh, I can't say. Um, I just knew that we needed somebody else, and uh, the opportunity came along to get some what I thought were good people, and uh, so I'd get permission to talk to the boss, and talk to von Kleinschmidt, Dr. von Kleinschmidt, and get an approval, and we would make the man an offer. And it isn't very hard to get people for a job, teaching job in California for someone who is living in snow and ice during the winter months. And uh, we did have some very fine teachers. That, that was an outstanding legacy you left the department because they would distinguish themselves in all regards. I, I happened to be rummaging through some old papers and I saw a letter that you wrote to Dr. Em to Dr. Emery, uh, seeking, uh, asking him that, or granting the position to him on, mm -hmm. on the faculty, and that he would teach in his first year geology one, <laughs> a senior level geomorphology course, a course in geography, mm -hmm. a mapping <laughs> course, surveying. <laughs> there must have been six courses that he had to teach, all different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then he would have time, the rest of it, of course, was for his research. research. <laughs> right. And this is the letter, and I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. there is, I don't there, recall it. But. Well, I'll tell you, it, it, obviously he came, and, and he did all of these things, mm -hmm. and uh, then still became a member of the National That's Academy. Right. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if you can get a new professor to teach uh, two <laughs> courses in a year, That's right. you're doing very well. I'm sure of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, in those early days, uh, everybody, every teacher in the department taught every course in the department. Yeah. Right. And uh, we didn't, we weren't uh, limited to some part of it. But I, I do have a recollection of, of the, some of the people that we, had there, and you know them, and you were one of them. <laughs> and uh, uh, we had some very fine geologists, actually. And they didn't seem to bother too much about teaching a beginning class, excepting uh, one. Uh, Was that Dick Merriam? Or? Dick, no, Canadian. Oh, uh, Lawton. Uh, hmm? Duncan McNaughton. Duncan McNaughton. Uh, when he came down, I, I gave him a, a class to teach of the beginning geology. And this happened to be the first year of my daughter's attendance at school. And she was in that class, <laughs> and he almost had a fit. <laughs> but he, he got through with it all right, and uh, I, I didn't relieve him. I, I just told him to go ahead and teach. He thought, he thought you had a spy in the classroom, is that it? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but uh, uh, he, he was 
taken aback when I asked him to take that class. But uh, most everyone took a beginning class anyhow. I mean, taught a beginning class, just started in the department. And uh, I think things worked out pretty well. We got a bunch of good graduates, as you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> being one of them. <laughs> Well, I had a course from McNaughton. Uh, hmm? uh, I had I had one course from McNaughton, and uh, a beginning mineralogy course. Mm -hmm. Mineralogy was in two yeah. semesters in those days. Uh, and as I remember, w w weren't there another couple of young professors up above? It wasn't John Russell and what? Didn't astronomy share the fourth floor of bridge with geology? Yes, they uh, he they had, did. They had classes up there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, <clears throat> On the whole, the fourth floor was geology. Right. Yes. Well, you Inclu including, if you may <laughs> remember, a big dog that used to come up there. <laughs> and That's right. Take up the all the floor of the office. Well, you were very much in on the development of the graduate programs in geological of sciences of the graduate programs, yeah. in that I believe your master's program began. Perhaps the year before you, you uh, arrived, 1928, and uh, I think that I was told that the the doctoral program began in 1933, with your first doctor uh, doctoral student being uh, uh, or doctoral degree being conferred in 1937. And certainly, that was a beginning of a a very active uh, graduate program. Well, that's true. I'd forgotten it. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Do you remember who the, who the uh, would you remember who the first Ph.D. is, Tom? Of what? Do you remember who the first Ph.D. Uh, fellow was? Oh. Was that John Hazard? Does the name John Hazard ring a bell with Union Oil? Uh, it make, makes a bell, but I don't recall his. I don't, I don't either. I, having a. Right. Uh, I was. T oh. I, you, pardon me. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, did you remember who it might have been? Um, I think just, it just I, I have a touch of it. I can't tell you the whole thing, right? But I I do recall that uh, uh, this one that you just named. Uh, I was I was uh, told that in those early days, say the early '30s, that M and S materials and supplies meant you went to either Robenheimer or von Kleinschmidt, and they handed out. Right. <laughs> Is that true? They gave you, I mean, actually physically reached over and gave you the pencils and right. the pens and everything? Actually, no. That, did, that didn't work that way. No, no I, I had very good relationship with, uh, with Dr. von Kleinschmidt. And uh, in his last years, why, we became very close friends. Uh, I think one reason was that my wife uh, and Mrs. von Kleinschmidt uh, hit it together. They uh, went to, she gave a, a party for the new faculty, and uh, Lydia and I went to it. and. Uh, Mrs. von Kleinschmidt and my wife became very close friends. And through that, why, uh, Dr. von Kleinschmidt and I became good friends. I <clears throat> even came to the point where I would uh, walk into his office and not be growled at by mm -hmm. his secretary. Uh, uh, she she kept people out. If, if she didn't think they ought to come in, why you couldn't see them. But uh, for some reason, we made friends with her too, and our relationships were very good. A lot of the teaching staff didn't like Dr. von Klein Smith. In fact, they claimed they hated him. But. Uh, 
I found him to be a, a very pleasant gentleman. He was a gentleman. He had all the manners. He walked down the street and passed a girl, always tipped his hat, and usually called him by name because he had a marvelous memory for names and faces. Uh, I know one who, who came up to visit one day in, in the, at SC, and he, he was from, I've forgotten what college it was, but anyhow, uh, he, uh, Dr. von Kleinschmidt had given a talk there, and uh, this young fellow had taken his hat or something at, uh, where they were having their talk. And he, he came up back up on uh, the, this young fella came up on, on campus one day to see what th how things were here. And Dr. Von Kleinschmidt was on the, went out on the street, was walking up the street. He saw him, called him by name, and uh, <laughs> made a real impression on him and on me too because uh, the number of people he had to see during the day to remember someone he had just seen at another place uh, thought was pretty good. And I think you know he always touched his, always tipped his hat to the girls. Mm -hmm. uh, in his last years here, he and I uh, became fairly close friends. I had never expected to be very close friends with the head man, but uh, we did, and uh, I've al always uh, cherished the time we had with him, and my, Lydia, my wife, Lydia, and Mrs. von Kleinschmidt were close friends. They seemed to click when we, first time we met at a reception they gave just after we joined the staff and uh, that held all the rest of her time of Mrs. von Kleinschmidt's life. Well, you're mentioning your wife uh, makes me think in terms of of your uh, your travels in when you were doing research for example, in both here in California and in uh, South America, Latin America, and I believe uh, that your wife accompanied you on those on uh, those trips, and she's a, she is an artist. Yes, uh, she is an artist, and she did accompany on all the trips that I made. It was possible for her to go on, and. Uh, if I were doing a, a job on the geology of an area, she would paint. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't matter what she, what she saw that she wanted to paint, and she would paint. And uh, she accompanied me on almost all the trips I had for examinations and and uh, for jobs in general. And speaking of jobs in general, uh, when I was a, a graduate student at Caltech, uh, one of the members of the board there uh, was head of a mining company in Arizona. And uh, some, I don't remember now what the job was that came up on a mine there in uh, Arizona, but he asked me to go down and check on this, uh, which I did, and uh, there was a... <coughs> 
place for I, I stayed while I was there, and of course I was registered and lived in Hollywood, and so the name was there. And uh, the landlady never would speak to me, and uh, she was very standoffish. She wasn't a young kid either, she was well along in years. But when I checked out, I s said, I'm sorry, you never had anything to say to me. And she said, I know these young men from Hollywood. <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't talk to them at all. <laughs> That's the only time I ever <laughs> received that sort of a thing. But anyhow. I, I was impressed uh, once when we were on a field trip. I was a student and you were leading the trip. And uh, we ventured into Mexico, and uh, you spoke uh, Spanish just beautifully. You was almost like a second uh, native tongue to you. Did you just learn it on your on your geological trips, or had you had well, some? I, I had as many people do two years in, of it in college. After which I couldn't speak it, but uh, I also happened to live in. West Texas in a Mexican town oh. and uh, mm -hmm. absorbed quite a bit of it. And I, I, I did take the classes, but uh, I really learned it when, uh, when we went down. Af just after I graduated, I had a job with a mining company in Mexico, and we were at a smelter. And uh, we had 800 workers, and we had three men from the company, three Americans, and uh, I, I learned Spanish fast, I might say, and uh, we, we got to know Mexicans very well. And I, I did speak better Spanish than I do now, but uh, uh, when we went to uh, Colombia on sabbatical, I was invited to give a lecture on geology at the uni university in Bogota, and uh, I worried about it, and I went into the dictionary. I had a Spanish-English dictionary with me. And I put together a pretty good uh, talk, at least I thought so. And I gave it to the uh, geology majors down there. There were quite a few of them. I don't know, maybe 30 or 40. And so I was asked to give some lectures, and I gave them in Spanish. And uh, afterward, the uh, young man from the government uh, uh, said to me that, uh, or he thanked me for giving the lectures, and he said, you used a lot of words that uh, I, I didn't no. I said, well, they're all right out of the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> but given that uh, talk, it was much like uh, here at times, in, in the middle of the talk, as I looked around, there was a couple, or there were several in front who seemed to be taking notes. And back over on another part of the room, there were three or four of them talking together. And uh, then, in still another part of the room, they were reading the paper. And this uh, Colombian man apologized to me before, uh, when it was over. They're doing all this. I said, 
don't mention it. I have the same thing in, <laughs> <laughs> in California. <laughs> I don't have it quite that bad, I can <laughs> say. Well, things haven't changed an awful lot, Tom. I can tell you that. Uh, uh, well, uh, the uh, the move to the barracks. Uh, what? What? The did, what? Did we got. As I remember, the department wasn't with the de university then, but the department got moved from um, from Bridge Hall out of Bridge Hall into into a temporary quarters for a while. And uh, was that with the uh, with the promise that we would get permanent uh, quarters shortly? Was that the idea? With the promise, <laughs> but, uh, with opposition, but it did us it did us no good. We got the tents anyhow. Uh -huh. yes. However, things went pretty well down there. It was while, I don't know, they were getting some barracks ready for us or something. I never quite knew. Somebody pulled some wires when I wasn't looking. <laughs> so we, we had these, well, they weren't tents, were they? They were. Yeah, they were barracks, but they were, yeah. I think, surplus. Uh, surplus, right. yeah, war surplus. Mm -hmm. They weren't too bad, but hey, there was always a promise. Well, well we're, we're fixing this for you. Yes. They never quite got them fixed. Well, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, I'm not going to ask Tom any questions about sports at uh, mm -hmm. USC in those days because I can remember vividly uh, one fall. We asked him, um, what do you think of the World Series? And he said, I thought they played that last year. <laughs> and so I knew that his interest in baseball and sports was very limited. <laughs> so we didn't, pull, we didn't ask any more questions about sports to get in with the professor. Well, I can tell you one story about sports. My f first year here, um, Liddy and I went to a football game with Cal, SC and Cal. And SC won the game 72 to nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, the then, uh, what's his name? Anyhow, I can't remember the man's name. But he just poured it on, poured it on. And as a result of that, we couldn't place a graduate with any <laughs> oil company in California <laughs> <laughs> for years. For years, yeah. You know, it, was, it was a bad thing to do. Most of the oil companies were, were yes. headed up by Cal graduates yes, in those days. They right. had a much older department than ours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tom, uh, I don't remember, I don't know whether you will remember this or not, but you gave the first speech to the Los Angeles Basin Mineralogical Society in 1930. And then they asked you to give their 50th anniversary speech. And I was there for the 50th, my mm -hmm. wife and I, Faye. Mm -hmm. and, it and you made such a great introduction by saying, that you hoped that nobody was there that was there for the first time because you were going to tell the same jokes all <laughs> over again. <laughs> Which I thought was just a great touch of humor for, for a very interesting talk on Jade. The organization had its, 20, its 60th anniversary this year. Oh, yes, that's right. Still yeah. going. Still going. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. Tom, on behalf of the Emeriti Center and the University, I'd like to express our sincere thanks and appreciation for your joining us for this conversation today. And Barney, our thanks to you too for participating. It's been a real pleasure and a most enjoyable day. Uh, I remember, Tom, as when I came to the University as a young instructor, I stood in awe of our distinguished senior faculty, and you were certainly one of those gentlemen. Now, as a token of 
our appreciation, we'd like to present you with uh, this volume, The Trojan Gallery. It's uh, a chronology of the university from its beginning in 1880 to its centennial in 1980. We hope that you will enjoy this. Thank you very much. It, is, it has been a pleasure to try to answer your questions. And uh, I have enjoyed it very much. It's taken me back a large number of years to things, not that I've forgotten, because I have not, I have not forgotten things that happened during the 35 years that I was teaching geology at the University of Southern California.